Good morning. Awake, God's voice calls to us. I'd like to welcome all of you to the service this morning here and those of you worshiping with us at home. We begin the service by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we gather this morning. For many thousands of years, the Chippewas of Nawash, the Ottawa, the Saugeen Ojibwe peoples sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European settlers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was at times a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and in deep respect. It's the second Sunday of Advent and Christmas is drawing closer and closer. My name is Kate Monk, and I'm a licensed lay worship leader uh, with the United Church of Canada, and my home church is Thames View United in Fullerton. I'm happy to be with you this morning while Kate is on study leave, and you'll be welcoming her back next Sunday. I'd like to thank everyone involved in the service, for, uh, starting with Doug, and today's soloist Linda and Al for joining us this morning and as well as the audiovisual team and the Safe Spaces volunteers. I want to take just a second to say a special thank you as well to Nancy Hughes and her brother John Hughes and their families who placed the beautiful poinsettia in memory of their parents. We gather this morning to worship. We gather longing for gentleness among all. We gather longing for healing where there has been harm and we gather longing for peace in all parts of life. God is the home we seek. Come, let us worship God 
in the spirit of peace. Our first hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let's gather our hearts together in our prayer of approach. God does not want anyone to perish, but rather for all to come to repentance. Therefore, let us confess our sins, for God's salvation is at hand. Faithful God, we confess that we have not led lives of holiness. We suffer from impatience, apathy, and greed. We have not been at peace. We repent for these offenses and turn to you in love. Forgive our iniquity and pardon our sins that we may walk in righteousness to the glory of your name as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Brothers and sisters, by the mercy of Christ, our sins are forgiven, for salvation is at hand for all who turn to God. We'll now have the lighting of the candle of peace. We see a lot of angels this time of year. Plastic ones, soft ones, ceramic ones, 
Glass ones, big ones, little ones. The angels of the Bible always come as God's messengers. They have good news to proclaim, though it isn't always received that way. We watch the news from our community, country, and other places around the world. We, are worry, we worry and are afraid. The angels of the Bible almost always proclaim their message and say, do not be afraid. As we light the candle of peace, may we put aside our fears, trust the angels' words, do not be afraid, so that we can keep working, hoping, and praying for peace and justice. So that we too can be messengers of God's good news of peace and hope. Lord, let us hear your words again. Do not be afraid. May we continue to be your messengers of hope and peace in a world that wants us to be afraid. Be present with us as we journey in Advent. Amen. The response of psalm today is number 85, and it's number 802 in the hymn book. gracious to your land, O God. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave forgave the the offense of of your your people people and and pardoned pardoned all their sin. sin. You drew back 
all your displeasure and turned away from fiery wrath. Restore, Restore us again, God, God our, our Savior, Savior, and put away your just anger towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your wrath to all generations? Will you, Will you not, not revive, revive us again, again that, that your people may rejoice in you? Let me hear what you will say, O God, for you will speak peace to your people, to the faithful who turn their hearts to you. Surely, Surely salvation, salvation is near those who fear you, and your glory will dwell in our land. Mercy and faithfulness will meet. Justice and peace will embrace. Faithfulness will spring up from the earth, and righteousness will live forever. You, O oh God, will give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness will go for you, and the paths of your feet will be peace. God, show us your love, show us your love. Our second reading today is from Isaiah, chapters 1 to 5, and this is from the New International Version. Comfort, comfort my people, says, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has been received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. The glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever done an independent travel trip in a faraway land? I've done this outside North America once and only once. And for me, the worst thing, the thing of bad dreams is not being able to find a place to stay. It's getting late in the day and you try one place and it's full. And you try another place and it is full. And it goes on and on. And you're starting to get panicky. It's getting late. It's getting dark. Maybe you're now in a neighborhood you're not so sure about. And you're likely lost. I shiver just thinking about it. Now ramp that up exponentially. Say a hundred times. And you have Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem with a multitude of people trying to find a place to stay. And that situation in and of itself is concerning enough. And I don't think they were really wondering and choosing between one place that had a spa and one place that had a buffet breakfast. I think they were beyond that. I think they were looking for a place where she could have her baby. And did you remember that Mary is just a teenager and this is her first baby? And uh, did I mention how important this baby is? This is the baby. And I can just hear Mary saying, no pressure, Joseph, but we need a place right now. And how do you think the innkeeper would have described the last space he had? It probably wasn't listed in Airbnb as a, a quaint, rustic, one-room open concept with a loft bedding not provided, allergy alert, livestock are in the premises, smoking not allowed, and breakfast is not included, but you can go to the nearby inn. Now, Joseph didn't say to the innkeeper, we're not about to have the king of the Jews in a stable. Kick someone out of their room. This baby is more important than anyone staying there. No. 
they settled for the stable. And that is the place that the savior of all humankind was born. And can you imagine the frantic energy of the evening? And the fear, the fear, the great, great fear about whether Mary or the baby or both would live to see the next day. And yet we romanticize the night and the place so much that we sing Silent Night every Christmas Eve. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. And I find it really hard to believe that it was a silent, peaceful night. So really, was it peaceful or wasn't it? Well, maybe it was. Maybe it was because really, I think the only way that it could have been peaceful is if the Spirit of God covered and surrounded and held that family and the stable together that night. Amy Grant has a wonderful song, and maybe you know it. It's called Breath of Heaven. Breath of Heaven. So search for it on YouTube when you can. Breath of Heaven by Amy Grant. And here are some of the words she believes Mary is praying on her journey. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened by the load I bear in a world as cold as stone. Must I walk this path alone? Be with me now, she's referring to God. Be with me now, breath of heaven. Hold me together. Be forever near me, breath of heaven. Lighten my darkness. Pour over me with holiness. For you are holy, breath of heaven. Everyone's talking about what Christmas Day will be like during the pandemic, with the directions from health authorities to not have people over for Christmas. There's no other holy day that is so wrapped in emotion. And this year, we're going to have to make some heart-wrenching decisions about who's going to be around the Christmas dinner table with us. Rebecca Tucker has a good article in Broadview, and it was just published on Friday, and it provides her perspective of a millennial. And she says, it's important that we accept our pain and longing and sit with our disappointment as it strongly underscores the true heart of the season. This Christmas, we won't be missing gifts, we'll be missing one another. And for me, the only way that I will get through this is to accept the idea that this Christmas we're going to be alone so that next Christmas we'll all be together. This Christmas we're going to be alone so that next Christmas we will all be together. And we are going to get through this. We have survived harder things. And I may not like it, and you may not like it, but you can still be at peace with it. You can still be at peace with it. And when I am in p at peace with this, my family will be at peace with this. If I can be happy, my family can be happy, and you know the expression, happy wife, happy life. It's a lot to expect, and it's a lot to accept, and for many this will be a first but I truly believe that the Trinity will be present at Christmas and will bring us comfort and will bring us joy and we will be blessed. Yes, indeed, God, our creator, Jesus, your savior, and the Holy Spirit, your comforter, will still be present. And brothers and sisters, that peace about that can only come from God. And only happens when we are attached, when we're connected, when we're in tune with God. Verses 3 and 4 in Isaiah 26, which is a psalm of praise, says, Those of us, those of steadfast mind, you keep in peace. In peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. The first two candles on the Advent wreath 
are connected. Last Sunday was the candle of hope. And when you have this hope in Christ and faith that things you hope for will come true, peace, the second candle, will follow. Thomas Merton was an American Trappist monk, and he was a writer and a theologian and a mystic and a poet and an activist, and he was a religious scholar, and he said it well. He said, we are not at peace with others because we are not at peace with ourselves. And we're not at peace with ourselves because we are not at peace with God. And I'll repeat that last part. We're not at peace with ourselves because we are not at peace with God. This year, peace is not going to be found in the personal planning or attempts to control circumstances and the people in your life. Peace is not going to be found in trying to wiggle around the rules that we're living with. Peace is found only in trusting Christ, who gently holds your life in the palm of his hands. And if we're not at peace, we can't really be happy in the moment. And when we're at peace, we can be present and we can be thankful for what is happening at this time. Not comparing it to Christmas's past, but being present, not just present, but happy and joyful on December 25th, 2020, and all the weeks leading up to it. I find that often at Christmas, we're so much like Martha, who worked away in the kitchen and missed out on time with Jesus, that we spend so much time in preparations and the joyful, albeit frank, uh, frantic activity on Christmas Day, that the time just slips away without thinking about the miracle of Jesus' birth and the great love of God who came to earth to live among us. My hope and my prayer for each of you is that there will be time and space for Jesus, the Prince of Peace, that there'll be time and space for Jesus to be present in your Christmas, that you are, can welcome Christ into your space and into your hearts, and that during this Advent and Christmas season, unlike any other we've experienced, you can sit with Jesus. May it be so. Amen. Let's join in our offertory prayer. Lord, we give you thanks that in the coming of Christ, your steadfast love and faithfulness have met, and your righteousness and peace have kissed. May the gifts we offer this day lift up those in need and prepare the way of your salvation. Amen.
pray with me? The angels proclaimed peace on earth when the baby Jesus was born. But today, God, we wonder as we listen to the news, is peace even possible? We all need peace in our lives. We need inner peace, and we need peace with others. Inner peace begins with our relationship with you, our creator, and continues as grow and grows as we focus on your strength. Exchange our weakness for your strength in all areas of our lives, but especially this Advent season when we make difficult decisions on our family gatherings and our Christmas worship services. God, keep us in perfect peace as our minds focus on you and trust you. Grant us wisdom and patience with each step we take. Guide us through the maze of life. You've called us to be peacemakers, and as we are at peace, we, may we pass on peace to others around us. Show us where we can be peacemakers this Christmas in our homes, our families, our communities, and help us to bring peace to our world one heart at a time. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn today is Good Christian Friends Rejoice. And now, may the breath of heaven hold you together, be forever near you, and may you know God's peace in words and in ways of comfort, and may you show God's peace to everyone around you, and may God's peace and hope shine in all the world today and through the week. Amen. Thank you.